How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today is a very exciting day for us. We have just moved out of our house that we've been in in Perth for the last few months yep. and we're officially back in the tree for you full time. We're back in mate. Uh, we've been in for 35 minutes and we're loving it. We've made a few changes. The main thing we've concentrated on in the troopy this time round is storage, mm -hmm. uh, maximizing our space because we don't have much of it and we've put a lot of research and effort in and it's paid off. Yeah. So we can't wait to share with you that. And focused on everything that sort of annoyed us about the yeah. setup the last time round, we've pretty much corrected all of that. So it should yeah. be perfect. We've made a few changes under the car. There's two main things that I can't wait to show you. So we're going to give you a bit of a walk around. Just before we get into it, don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and uh, give it a big thumbs up. I'm going to do the walk around now and then Megan's going to show you inside the car where some pretty cool storage hacks have been made. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get into it. Okay, we'll start at the front guys. We've got the ARB Deluxe Bull Bar. Now, everything has pretty much been on the car for two and a half years and the ARB bar work, we'll get to the side steps and uh, scrub bars in a minute, but it's all holding up great. Uh, no paint fade and definitely doing what it needs to do so it's staying on the car we got the GME area for our GME two-way inside there we got the spotties from hardcore BZR215 they got their driving lights there which stay on during the day nice little feature we got the Ridge Rider 12,000 pound winch now that cost me 500 bucks and it's still running perfectly we've used it a few times and it works every single time it's been underwater multiple times and it's still going hard so that stays on the car as well there's not too much at the front we'll go around to the side so we got the ARB scrub bars and side steps as well now that has done what it needs to do a few times protect the side of the car and the underbody there oh. oh my god what was that and it works great I love the look of ARB bar work as well I think it just finishes the car off so nicely the Safari R Max is on there still so it's a big four inch intake and when we put that on the car it actually did make a big difference and it helped greatly not a big difference but it, it made a noticeable difference with the air intake and it helped us greatly especially on the Give River Road and all those water crossings in Queensland we did so definitely recommend one of them we've got our steady lights around the whole perimeter of the car still I love having lights on the perimeter of the car with the switches up in the bed because when it comes to going to sleep at night in the middle of nowhere sometimes and you hear funny noises and you start to uh, think what the hell's going on outside you just flick those switches and you can see all those bloody dingoes that are surrounding your car and they run away very quickly so they're good to have on the side I like having those lights up there so they're staying again we got the quick pitch ensuite still now the canvas is fading a little bit, which is totally expected. It's been on there for a long time. And I would recommend having one of these in your car. Most tourers do now these days. They're, they're becoming quite popular. They're, there's all kinds of different brands out there. Quick Pitch, Kick-Ass, and a few other ones. Kings have now got it as well. So you've got a big selection there. We've still got our Quick Pitch going as well. And we're going for a simple shower setup again. This is what we used on the last trip. It's just, you dunk that in a bucket and you got your shower head, which sits up here and bang, you're showering. With a 10 litre bucket we use, I think we got it down packed to 10 litres, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, 10 litres each we use. And all our soaps get kept in that little nook there as well. We've got another light there, like I was saying. Now, this is one of the wicked changes we've made. We got rid of the rear bar. It was a MCC rear bar. And we have now got the original bumper on and we've got this new spare tire bag carrier. I always forget the name of what you actually call them. Spare spare, spare rubbish bags, yeah, bag. something like that. And yeah, we've got it from PM Canvas Products. Now, Kelly and Nathan are absolute legends. Wicked small Australian business and the product they have produced for us is incredible. So the rear bag was something that I was looking for for ages and one day, lucky enough, I saw a troopy with one. <laughs> Funny, it was a troopy. I walked straight up to it, took a photo, saw their name on the side, gave them a call. We were on the phone for about half an hour. Kelly, I spoke to Kelly, and she said, "Do you want your side bags, front bag? You can you can get all kinds of like stuff fitted to it. She'll do whatever you want." And uh, it was all made up, and I could not be happier. There's a mesh bag in here as well. She made up a uh, mesh bag. Oh, rubbish is meant to go in the mesh bag 
But yeah, she's made up this little bag for us here and we can just take that straight out and take it to the bin in the caravan park or wherever we are. So that's a brilliant little addition. So yeah, snap strap, uh, shopping bags, hoses, anything you want really. That's all going in there. And they actually make them in all different colors as well. So go check them out. I reckon it is possibly one of the best bags on the market. We had the camp cover bag on there from Quick Pitch, but the only reason we got rid of it was because it wasn't big enough. I wanted more storage, so that's what we've done. Otherwise, those bags are really good as well. Now, under the car, we've put a Benetti's Campers 45 litre water tank. Now, he sent that over from Queensland and it came very quickly, so thank you very much. And it cost us 460 delivered to Perth. So it's a poly tank. It feels like a very good build. I mean, it came with brackets and everything and I've just run a pump inside. We'll, Megan will show you that when we do the inside, but that removes the 244 22 litre jerry cans we had here before on the rear bar. And now it's just so much easier just to open the door and jump straight in. We don't have to open the rear bar up and all that kind of stuff. And the, the uh, weight distribution is a bit better. I know there's a bit of weight at the back still, but it's low down and I'm, I'm very happy with it. So we still got our quick pitch max tracks table going strong. Honestly, it's one of our favorite things on the car. We use it every day for our barbecue and obviously it holds the max tracks and the quality, it's there. It has not broken, it has not started to come apart in any way. So yes, that's 100% staying on the car. And if you've got a troopy or a car that allows you to have some kind of table like this on, on your car, definitely consider it because it's uh, helped so much. We've got it so down packed inside. We've just got our two chairs and our solar blanket that sit in the middle of the uh, U-shape there inside. So another change that we've made apart from the so we got the water tank the rear bag carrier and we have put new tires on the car now we had the wild peak falcon wild peaks before 285 75 16 i did about 85,000 kilometers on them and on the last trip we did we i think we did 45,000 kilometers on those tires and towards the end we got two punctures in the sidewall it could have been because the tires had started to wear a lot more but i did do some research and the wild peaks have a two-ply sidewall these maxis razor all-terrains have a three-ply now i was looking at all kinds of different tires maxis cooper discovery goodyear toyo open country all those kind of ones and they just weren't in stock these were the only ones that were in stock so there is not really any particular reason I went with Maxxis, but I was looking for a three ply and that's what Maxxis had. So, and they had good reviews as well. So they're actually quite quiet, like the Wild Peaks. Um, but yeah, I'm not a tire specialist, so I, I can't tell you too much, but so far they're doing well. And the Wild Peaks were good, but just, I got a bit anxious with that sidewall. So that's why we've made the uh, change. So yeah. We still got the Alucab 270 degree shadow awning as well. The canvas on this thing has held up so well. There's no fade at all. So we're very happy with that. The awning itself has started to stretch a little bit when it's open. So it allows water to pull a little bit, but we've got some straps now that are going to be pulling down on that awning part and letting the water run out uh, overnight so that we don't have that problem. But other than that, it is going great. So it's staying on the car. I absolutely love the awning. And of course, as you can see, the roof conversion is obviously staying. We wouldn't be getting it off anytime soon. And we're not thinking about taking it off anytime soon because we absolutely love it. It is uh, hands down our most favorite part of the car. It just changed the whole experience and has made it so much better if you can we would highly recommend putting a rooftop tent or the conversion on your troopy because it is, uh, we're just so excited to go and travel in this again, we just can't wait. So yeah, tr tents on there still, not coming off. Um, that's pretty much the outside. I did all the hubs, seals, kingpin bearings, rear bearings, front bearings, and the wheels. I did disc brake rotors, disc brake pads. We still got our locker in there, the ARB rear locker. I did two new drive shafts, front and rear, with all new uni joints. The Lovell suspension kit is staying. The GVM upgradable one is what we've got. Now that has proved itself. It really is a heavy duty kit. Uh, I reckon it's still got a year or two years left in it. The shockies are still working fine. Now we hammered them on the last trip and they're still going great. So that's staying on the car. We would have liked to do a, a rear parabolic leaf spring setup, but we just um, couldn't afford that. We, we, 
we thought we didn't really need it so we're staying with the Lovells. With our power setup we're still running our AGM 135 watts uh, battery with the BCDC charger and 400 watt energy drive inverter. We're waiting on, it's coming in the post still, we're waiting for a lithium battery that we've got and a 2000 watt inverter. Now we cannot wait to have that kind of power in the car it's very exciting so we'll show you that when it comes uh, when it's all installed but yeah that's pretty much it for the outside of the car we're still running those stratos seats with the lower lumbar now i'm a big fan of them they help my back so much and would definitely recommend lower lumbar support that's pretty much it eh megan yep that's it so megan's going to show you the inside of the car now she's made some pretty good storage hacks and uh just while we're here actually i'm getting all excited this is our water pump. <laughs> Megan was going to show you, but I'm showing you now. <laughs> so this is our water pump. It pulls out, I've got probably about two meters of hose in there, and you just slowly put it away when we're done. And uh, I haven't got it turned on right now, but it's got some good pressure to it, and it, it definitely going to make the trip so much better. So yeah, that's our water pump. Over to you, Megan. Enough uh, talking from me, otherwise I'll keep talking all day. So like we said, we didn't change too much with the structure of the fit out, but we have tried to correct anything that sort of annoyed us the last time around. So one thing that annoyed us last time was having the dash look like an absolute disaster with things just being thrown on there. So we've got these little things just for anything miscellaneous. At the moment, we've just got masks and hand wipes and then any screws that Jack finds and he insists that he needs to keep every single screw, he can then just chuck it in there. <laughs> I've got a nut, bolt and screw problem. <laughs> and then also just cleared up a bit of space behind Jack's chair by grabbing this toolbox here. So I don't have very long legs, so I'm fine just, yeah sitting on top of that and then our drone there as well and another thing that we really wanted to correct was we used to store our cameras just in a camera bag and it was really difficult to try and pull out the bag and pull out the cameras if anything happened on the road that we wanted to get a shot of like sometimes we'd pass by some actually we did pass an eagle with a massive python in its beak flying and we missed it because we couldn't get the cameras out in time so we didn't want anything like that to happen again so we just uh, fabbed up this little box here from Kmart so we can store our cameras we in the middle there so we can always just grab the cameras if anything really cool like that ever happens again which I doubt it ever will but yeah that's it for the front up here anyway so if you've been watching our videos for a little while you know that I'm big on everything having its own home in the tree pit because as soon as one thing is out of place your whole living area is just a disaster. So one thing that did annoy us last time was that our collapsible bucket never had an actual designated area. We would try to wedge it down behind the fridge, but it didn't quite fit. So now we have got an actual spot for it. And it's now our little sink area instead of the other sink that we had before, because this is now able to pull out when we can use it for our showers and that sort of thing. So yeah, but um, just pretend that this is all perfect. perfect. <laughs> And it has another string here because that's how it's supposed to be. Jack's professional carpenter. <laughs> You're a jack of all trades. Yeah, mate. Master of... Master of none. Mm, a few. <laughs> and then here we've got our Outback Gear Solutions bag. That's a new addition as well, which we're absolutely loving. It's basically just a extra little kitchen area. So we've got like our... Um, in this long one, we've got, you know, uh, foil and that sort of thing. And then we've got tea and coffee. And then also just your citronella candles and that sort of thing. Anything that we need outside the car is all there. And then another little cooking area as well, which this is, I'll give you, I'll Who give you that one. these good looking roosters? <laughs> I'll give you that one. This one is very, very good and no edges that give me splinters like that one. <laughs> but yeah, a little spice rack is all here. And then obviously oil and vinegar and that sort of thing. And this is what I wanted to do last time around is our little Polaroid area. And I think it's not just going to be all selfies of us. What I'd like to do is um, people that we meet on the road. I'd really like to yeah. get a photo. If you see us driving on the road, come behind us like a crazy man, crazy lady, yell at us, tell us to pull over, we'll get a photo yeah. and we'll put it on that um, wall. Definitely. <laughs> I'd love to have that full by the end of the next lap. And another little hack that we've got over in this drawer, not too much has changed, but I do have these plates and things sitting upright, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And also a little collapsible kettle i mean that's you know nothing new but it's new for us and it's exciting because <laughs> that fits really really nicely another thing is the fact that our tea towels would never dry properly so we've just got a little rack for that as well so they can dry properly and that's pretty much it that's new for out here so we'll jump in and show you the rest 
So like we said, not too much has changed structurally with the interior because we did have a sit down and think and there wasn't really too much that we could do to improve it. You're probably wondering why we haven't changed it to accommodate Ollie and we will talk about that more at the end of the video. But I'll just show you through and I'll show you all of the little hacks that I've done to inside of the drawers and things just to really maximize the space. So first of all, we've got our companion barbecue still with our little rubber feet that literally worked perfectly the whole trip never slipped out and as jack said last episode it's a really good barbecue and we literally can't fault it so we've got the 60 liter ingle fridge freezer uh, which is still working perfectly professional hummer the little hum <laughs> And this is just another little addition that again has corrected something that annoyed us because we used to store our bananas and fruit in the cutlery drawer and they would always get dents in them from the cutlery divider or we'd put our fruit in the fridge and then our fridge would fill up massively. So that is working out really well and... Hey, we kind of copied sailing in the bag of Yeah, I saw that <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, where can I hang one of them? And I'm like, I know, on the bracket of the alu cap. I thought that it was going to hang like this so when the... um. Oh, it does hang there. Perfect. But then when you pull it down, then it sits on top of the fridge, but that's cool. There you go. <laughs> All right, so moving on. Uh, we have got the interior of our cutlery divider as well. I found this really cool thing online. The cutlery just goes in sort of, you know. The slots in there. Slots in, so you've got heaps more room for all this sort of utensils and things, and it's just a lot more organized. In the end, we just ended up chucking well not we jack ended up just chucking stuff in uh so yeah if it can start off organized maybe it'll stay organized and the next two drawers down we've just got sort of electrical stuff and beach towels in this one and this is another new addition that jack is obsessed with can't wait to i test that out. already <laughs> he's blown it on me and i can't feel the difference but i guess we'll see people rave on about them so i thought we'd give it a shot yeah and the other one desperately needed replacing so yeah and then down here is just our little pantry storage uh that's basically just tin food and that sort of things to keep the weight low and in the middle uh another little thing that we thought of that we really would have liked on the first lap is a mirror in the setup so now we've got a mirror because the only time we'd actually see our reflection was at caravan parks i mean we would kind of we'd forget to look on those mirrors on the side of the car so there you go. Not that, you know, you really need one, but it's nice to have. Now under here, as we've said before, our whole setup is basically built around our little toilet. Our favorite so little toilet. <laughs> we've got a freshie of one of them as well. Uh, this one, we kind of did need to replace the seals on the, what's it called? You know, the bit where you tip it out was starting to go a little bit. So we didn't really want any spillage inside the troopy. So yeah, we just got a new one of those, which and is great. And if anyone is wondering, I keep butting in because I'm so excited. <laughs> um, that doesn't smell in the troopy at all. No. It doesn't let any smell out. So if you're wondering, <laughs> it's not that <laughs> if bad. If you're wondering about toilet smells. <laughs> uh, so under here, we have still got one water tank. This used to be where we would have three water tanks stored but now we've got the tank underneath so we don't need all three but this is sort of like our linen closet here and then also our dirty laundry so another thing that we've sort of corrected was we used to store our dirty laundry just in a coles bag and it would always just go missing at the bottom of this tub so now i've got oh, it's got some dirty washing in there at the moment but um <laughs> i've just got one of these that is a bit more structured around the side so it will always just stand upright and also i just discovered today if this is all set up like it usually would be you can just lift this and shove your washing in and it's going to make it into the bag every time it's just a tiny thing but when you're on the road you know the little things start to add up so that's going to make life easier and another thing that's making life easier under here is these packing cubes and little storage things pretty sure we've been able to store at least 50 percent more clothes here which is awesome and another thing that I really love about them is that clothes that you don't need too often, like your jumpers and jeans and things, you can just store underneath and then you're not having to dig under jeans every time you want to get a shirt out. So, yeah. And then pretty much the last thing we've got up here is our camp cover bags, which I really thought I was going to be able to cull toiletries this time and we we're going to find something else to store in them, but that is literally all toiletries again up there. But... Oh well, if you need toiletries, you need them. Yeah. Oh, one more thing. 
No, two more things. Got some little hooks. It's just warming up, guys. <laughs> little hooks for our hats here. They do get a little bit squished, but I think it's still a pretty cool addition. And one last thing that we used to have in this middle drawer was all of our charging cables. And we would never be able to find the right cord. And it was just a disaster. So I went and got one of these that I thought was really cool. And so far it's saved us a lot of headaches for trying to ride, find the right cord and that sort of thing. So it's great. So that's all of my little storage hacks and additions. But for those of you that are new to the channel and you haven't seen our setup before, we do also have our little travel buddy oven here, which is great. Going to try and make an effort to use that a bit more often because I think we probably used it about seven times on the last lap. So definitely want to use that a bit more. And of course, where we sleep up the top here, here is, oh, is that going to get stuck though? It'll be all right. <laughs> it's not all right. We sleep up there. Here's our bed. Yep. If you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone wondering. And then yeah, it just gets pushed up, eh? Yep. And that is why we love it so much, guys. Yes. All right, we're going to tell you about, what are we going to tell them about now, Megan? Ollie. Poor little Ollie. Okay, so you're probably wondering why we didn't accommodate the fit out for Ollie. And if you're a new subscriber here, Ollie is our dog known as Ollie Bear or Mr. Mr. Waldo, <laughs> Mr. Waldo and many other names. He is a 46 kilo Labradoodle. Now we really, really, really wanted to take him, but we very quickly realized with all the WA trips we were doing, um, he's too big. He's, he's absolutely massive for the troopy and it just didn't work for us. And he's also got some medical conditions. He has very bad dermatitis. Um, he's got problems with his paws and his ears, which um, he has to go to the vet once, once a month. month. Yeah. And so. if he misses a vet visit, then he sort of has to start all over again and it becomes very uncomfortable for him and very expensive for yeah. us. So uh, he is a lot happier at my mum's house. He's very comfortable there. She loves having him and he absolutely loves his grandma. Yeah, probably um, because she feeds him a little bit of cheese every now and then. <laughs> but um, I think he's just going to be so much happier and yep. healthier, more comfortable there, which we're very, we are very disappointed about. And yep. I'm sure a few of you will be disappointed as well, but it is what it is. Yeah, it's just best for us and best for him with the decision we've made. So you're probably wondering why we didn't show you guys um, us saying goodbye to Ollie. It's because we're heading down south for a week and a half, two weeks at the moment. And what we've got planned, Ollie can't come to that. So we're coming back to Perth in Easter because it is going to be getting very cold down south and we want to chase the sun. So we're going down south, we're coming back for Easter and something very special is happening just before you thought the FJ story was over, the FJ 45. Uh, the old man's called me up and he's been calling me up and he wants to go camping and he wants to go on the beach. The troopy and his FJ on the beach is going to be iconic mate <laughs> so i've been camping with my dad for 18 17 18 years i think it is so it's going to be a very very special day and dad is all for filming the whole experience and it gives me goosebumps thinking about it i cannot wait to produce that video it's going to be a special one so yeah that's that's the plan we're coming back we're going to film that video and then we're going to continue on north mm -hmm. And, uh, and we're are, just, yeah, we're yeah. so excited to share this with you guys. I feel like the last lap was very much us. Uh, yeah. It was, you know, the culmination of five years of hard work and saving. Whereas this lap, we're really keen to get you guys more involved. Yeah. Uh, take on any suggestions where you want us to visit and yeah. really just show you this amazing country. Yeah, we're, we're so excited to have you guys come along with us. Yeah. We, we're, we're thinking There's out... There's a few more of you here yeah, than yeah. they were this time last year. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're starting to think outside the box to make our videos a little bit different. Yeah. And we, I think we've got some pretty cool stuff in store, something different and something we haven't seen other YouTube channels do, mm -hmm. I, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're trying to think really outside the box here and if it all works out, it's going to be great. Yeah. It's going to be fun and it's going to be a great experience. So we can't wait to share it all with you. And uh, this is it, guys. It officially starts. Yeah. We are back in the trophy. So let's get into it and we'll see you next episode. Around the southwest. Yep. Thanks for watching. So we have just moved out of our house that we've been here. Uh, oh, my God.
Max, this is uh, so, so yeah. Sorry, I have a sand fly on me. This is my new little banana hammock. <laughs> and you start to crap yourself, uh, and you can't say crap. But now we've got the tank underneath, so we don't need um, all four. Ne <laughs>